Is this golf ball overrated? The Titleist Pro V1. Well, when it first came out in the year 2000, it changed the golf ball world. 20 years on, is this still the best premium golf ball or has it now been caught up? Well, in this video, we're gonna find out whether the Pro V1 is overrated or whether these other golf balls are actually underrated. So I currently use this golf ball, the Titleist Pro V1. And throughout the years, I have done since probably the year 2000. When it first came out, I remember it was the like premium, premium golf ball. And honestly, it did actually change the way that golf balls were made. First time ever you could get a distance ball that still had feel and durability, but it did obviously come at a cost. Every two years you get a new Pro V1 golf ball. And now this is the, the latest version, the Titleist Pro V1. It's become a name that's synonymous with premium golf balls. It's become its own brand, pretty much, Pro V1. People don't really even call it a Titleist Pro V1. But is it the best golf ball? Or is it kind of overrated? Is it, are golf balls now catching up? Well, I've got some other golf balls. That's the Pro V1. And we're gonna test that in this video. But also a golf ball that's really caught up in the last few years is the TaylorMade TP5. Now the TaylorMade TP5 came out about probably four years ago now and it's the first time that really TaylorMade grabbed onto the golf ball market and actually made a golf ball that could compete against the Pro V1. I actually used it for a period of time and believe it or not I got my first ever hole in one with the TP5 and it's a very very good golf ball. But in this video, we're going to see how it compares against that Pro V1. And then there's other brands that also make a premium golf ball. The Shrixen Z Star. Now the Shrixen Z Star, Shrixen make loads of golf balls. And in fairness, it's probably no, probably what the brand is most well known for. They make mass production on, let's say, the, the AD333, which does amazing as mass production sale. But their premium golf ball is this, the Z Star. Again, I've used it in the past and I like the golf ball, but what does it do in comparison to the Pro V1 and the TP5? And then finally, another company, a bit like TaylorMade, who have really tried to crack into this premium golf ball world is the Callaway. And they've brought out the new Callaway Chrome Soft for 2020. And lots have gone into this golf ball. And it's the only golf ball in this test that's actually got a slightly different dimple pattern in the fact that the dimples are hexagon shaped. But it's a good golf ball. And again, actually one that I've used in the past. I've used all these golf balls in the past, but what makes them different? Well, in this video, we're gonna try and find out. I'm gonna hit some wedge shots, see how they all spin. I'm gonna hit some seven iron shots and see it compare the golf balls for distance and spin. And I'm gonna hit some driver shots to compare the golf balls on distance and ball speed. I'm also gonna give you a little idea on the feel of these golf balls. So after I've tested them all on different shots and also what's the durability like on these golf balls? How much can they withstand being hit by wedge shots and how much do they cut up? We're gonna find out in this video as well. Now at the time of filming, I have been online and checked the prices of all these golf balls and they are pretty much the same price, give or take one or two pounds. They're pretty much all around the £40 per dozen mark here in the UK. So they're all very similar price points. Let's see how they do and give them a proper test here in the home simulator. You know what? I am really excited and intrigued to find out the results of this test. To hit these four premium golf balls against each other is going to be really interesting. Um, just a quick one, also, these are all the standard version of the golf ball. They're not the X version, they're the standard ball from each version, because that's a fairer comparison. Now, on the box, honestly, every single one of these boxes could have been written by the same person. Every golf ball offers more distance, more ball speed, better green side spin, better durability. You see it every time, the same on every box. The one difference, and I've never seen this on a golf ball box before, on the Shrix and Z Star, it actually does say, do not leave near extreme heat or in the trunk slash boot of a car in the summer. 
Interesting. Uh, I think there has actually been tests to show that if a golf ball gets too hot, it actually doesn't perform great. Luckily today, we're not, we're not in a super hot climate, so it should be uh, nice and fair. Right, how I'm gonna conduct this test, I'm gonna hit the 100 yard shot first with my 56 degree sand wedge, and I'm gonna alternate between the balls so that we get to a conclusion for see the averages. So I'm gonna alternate between the shots. Right, let's kick things off. I'm intrigued. I can't wait to see which golf ball spins the most from 100 yards out. Okay, so let's have a look at the results for the spin test. I hit 100 yard wedge shots, and I'm typically looking for a premium golf ball to spin around 10,000 RPM of backspin on a shot like that. Well, it's good to know all four golf balls passed with flying colors, pretty much bang on the 10,000 RPM spin mark. The one that actually spanned the most was the TaylorMade TP5 by a couple of hundred RPM. Interesting to know. On field, they all felt very similar with the wedge shots. Not really anything that stood out there. So next test, seven iron. Let's test it for distance and spin. And like the wedge shot, I'm gonna hit a couple of shots with each balls and then alternate between them so we get a nice, fair test. Let's hit some seven iron shots and see how they do. Okay, so seven iron testing is done. Again, in this test, I alternated between the golf balls, so we got a nice fair test. Now, typically for myself, hitting a seven iron with a premium golf ball, I'm looking at carrying the golf ball 168 yards. And typically, the goal would be to get around about 7,000 spin with a seven iron. That would be a quite a high spin golf ball. Let's have a look at the results, because they're quite interesting. First off, on distance, carry distance, pretty much every golf ball carried the same distance. On average, on the test with the seven iron, 168 yards with the Pro V1, 170 yards with the Callaway Chrome Soft, 168 yards with the TP5, and 168 yards with the Shrixen Z Star. Very little in it at all. The highest spinning golf ball was the TP5 at 5,900. Yet the lowest spinning, and it was a total of a thousand RPM difference, was the Shrixen which surprised me. I didn't think we'd see that much of a difference. The Pro V1 sits right in the middle there at 5,400. So not the highest spinning, but not the lowest spinning. Interesting results. Spin, spin numbers are diff more different than I expect them to be with the seven iron. Let's jump over to driver next. We're gonna test it for ball speed, every one of the golf balls for ball speed and distance. Is there gonna be much of a difference? between those four. And then finally, we've got to test them for durability. Let's get the driver out. So when it comes to driver testing with premium golf balls, this is the test that typically I see the least amount of difference when testing premium golf balls. I want a top range ball to go around 280 yards of carry distance, to give me ball speed around 160 miles per hour ball speed and spin rate to be around about 2000. And in this test, these golf balls have not let me down. And in fact, the data is so similar, it's unreal. 
So carry distances, they're all pretty much around the 280 mark. Pro V1 282 yards, Chrome Soft 282, TP5 280 and and Z Star at 283. I mean, no difference whatsoever. And we see the same with ball speed. There's very little difference in ball speed. You know, it's hard, you know, hardly anything, certainly with human testing. And again, spin rate, not much difference. The highest spin rate was the TP5, which has been quite a similar story throughout this whole test. But driver on premium balls, that's what I typically see. And as I mentioned, none of these golf balls have let me down. Now I've hit all these balls now with the wedges, the seven irons and the drivers. And in the past, I have, have hit all of these golf balls on a putting green to get the feel. This again, where it comes down to feel. These golf balls have that nice blend between, you, they're soft, but they're not squishy. You know, when a golf ball, when it gets too squishy, just doesn't feel like it's producing any speed. And tests have shown that as well. They've got a nice feel to them. They're soft, they give a little bit of feedback and they're certainly not rock hard. Because again, rock hard golf balls, for me personally, I just don't like the feel of them. Chipping, putting, hitting shots, I just hate it when they feel like they're, they're like rocks. They're a good balance, these. And again, I couldn't separate these four golf balls. I couldn't say one of them is softer than the other. They all feel so unbelievably similar. So far, we're not seeing much of a difference, are we? So, the last test is a durability test. These are the golf balls I've hit all the way through the test. I'm gonna carry them out with these golf balls as well. I'm gonna hit 10 full wedge shots, lob wedge shots, which is typically a shot you'll see the most scuff marks because the grooves can cut the cover. Let's see on this test, the durability test, which golf ball potentially has the most damage to it. This again will be quite interesting. Okay, <laughs> let me get my breath back. That's the durability test done. I hit 10 full lob wedges with each ball, plus the testing it's already been through. And I think this is where premium golf balls, the more expensive golf balls, definitely come into their own. There's damage, yes, but very, very little. All of these golf balls, are still plenty usable. There's no hard scuffs. There's a few little tiny scratches. Again, it's hard for me to say which one has come out on top because they are all so unbelievably similar. Durability test, every one of them passes with flying colors. I wouldn't have an issue with any of those at all. By the time you've hit that many full lob wedge shots, you'd have easily lost one of these. But even if you were to hit so many lob wedge shots or thinned or whatever shots it may be, these balls definitely test, last the test of time. Right, so in conclusion, that was an interesting test. The question I had was, is the Pro V1 golf ball overrated? Well, what was really interesting there in the performance, we saw that there was next to no difference. Between these golf balls, there's next to no difference. Considering, each of these golf balls comes from a different manufacturer. Different research and R&D and development has gone into making these golf balls. And even the way they've been put together is totally different. I chopped them all in half and they're not even close to being similar. Going back to that original question, is the Pro V1 golf ball overrated? Well, in my opinion, it's the best golf ball in golf. But from that test we've seen today, so are these ones. <laughs> There's not much difference at all. I think it completely and utterly comes down to personal preference. Guys, stay tuned, lots more to come, and we shall see you next time.